Previously, I have ranked all ranged and all melee weapons in RimWorld, but today I am going to be ranking all of RimWorld armor and explaining how it actually works. I'm going to be looking at all of these pieces over here and we're going to be thinking and talking about how much armor they can provide, their utility, if they reduce movement speed, what kind of stuff they can be made out of, how much they cost in materials and research, what they cover, all kinds of stuff. So let's start first with a bunch of helmets as you can see over here. Helmets are pretty straightforward, it gets more complicated later down with the rest of the armor, but let's get these ones through. First we have the toque or cowboy hat, I just picked the toque over here as a, as a thing, they, they provide the same armor protection, both of them. The toque you would want to use in cold environment because they are great for insulating against cold and cowboy hat in warm environment, so they can be used like that. As armor, they don't really provide that much, they don't cover your whole face, you know, that you don't have any coverage for eyes and such, but, you know, they are a decent option before you can start making some simple helmets. We're gonna put these ones into C tier. Next, we have the two tribal things we can pick over here, tribal helmets. First, we have Veil. These, if they are made out of like really, really the best materials, something like Hyperweave, they can be compared to some other helmets. But let's be real, if you have Hyperweave, you're probably making some way better armor already, or it could be safe for something much more useful than a Veil. So I, I really wouldn't be wasting my Hyperweave and such on it. It does provide coverage for your whole face, which toques and cabo heads do not, but I still think it's one of those that it's really not worth using. We're gonna put into F tier, especially if you can also at the same time just make these war masks if you're playing as a tribal person. These can only be made out of wood, so clearly they don't offer as much protection, but if you really need some protection and you can't make any normal helmets and such yet, you're playing as tribal, it's better if you just use cheap materials, ergo wood, to make some masks that will provide protection for your whole face, save your you know extremely expensive materials like hyper for something else, rather than veils, and then these masks can provide you protection until you can level up your research and get to some better helmets. We're gonna put the war mask up here into C tier. Next we have our early game friends and that is the simple helmet. These bad boys are gonna be your friends for a long time, just put, just stick them on your colonies heads and they will be nicely protected. Of course, Unfortunately, they do not cover as much as your face as War Mask or Veil do, but they will offer a lot more protection in general, otherwise, unless they are really crap quality. So keep using these ones. Of course, you can make them out of plasteel, and they will offer a lot of protection, but at that point, if you have enough plasteel to just make a lot of them uh, out of that, it's maybe better that you start saving plasteel for something else, because Pretty much all of the higher quality helmets will also require plasteel and will then be better as well than the simple helmet. But simple helmet really is your early game friend and it's gonna help you survive a lot longer. We're gonna put it up here nicely in B tier. Next we have an upgrade on the simple helmet. This is a flak helmet, it requires a bit more research which is reasonable and it actually needs, uh, it needs components and plasteel. To make this time. So if you were making plasteel simple helmets, they might be better than some crappy version of these, but if you make flat helmets out of steel and they're good quality, they'll be up there, you know, and then of course if you get enough components and plasteel, you can just make these out of plasteel as well. They are stuffable so you can use more uh, ingredients. Basically, they're just better version of the simple helmet, but they're more expensive, so if you can make good, like really good quality steel helmets, you might want to save the plasteel and just make these simple steel ones or something like that. Next we go to the power armor helmets, and first we have the recon helmet, or as I like to call it, raccoon helmet. These bad boys start to provide full face protection unlike these two helmets, so that already is an upgrade. Of course, they do cost more. First of all, you need to do a lot more research and they're starting to cost advanced components. So for the longest of times, 
In your colony, you'll be using flag helmets and simple helmets, and you'll be happy with them. But eventually, when you start getting towards the late game, you can start unlocking some better stuff, and this is where the raccoon helmet comes out of. And these are, you know, they are straight upgrade over these, so we'll put them into A tier. And as I said before, with helmets, it's pretty straightforward. We have then marine helmets, which require, again, even more research than the raccoon helmets but they provide more protection for only slightly more cost. They only cost like 10 more plasteel, which is really straightforward. It still costs one advanced component, but it doesn't double on the advanced components, which is amazing really. So these guys are actually really worth it. Once you do the uh, research, just go for marines. So if you know that you can actually do the research and you know you have enough plasteel that you're gonna be making marine helmets for everybody, just skip the raccoon helmets in between because these just straight up provide you more protection so if you wait a bit longer for the research to be finished in that time maybe grind out more advanced components you can go straight up from flak helmets to marine helmets and skip these between but you know these ones still provide more protection than these if you go for them last but certainly not the least amongst the helmets we have the cataphract helmet these bad boys provide the most protection out of all of them the power helmets are not stuffable so you know they have a fixed cost out of what you can make them but the thing is once again these cost advanced components luckily for us these cost the same advanced components as these two versions and only 10 more plasteel than the marine helmets. So they are straight up an upgrade with just slightly more cost, which is amazing. The main problem here is that to actually unlock the research for the cataphract stuff, you do need the cataphract blueprints, the tag blueprints, which cannot be, they're not that easy to get. So you'll probably only be unlocking this in a like real late game unless you might be able to buy some of them, but you know, for the ones that you can make yourself, it's gonna take you quite a while to get there. They're clearly an S tier helmet, they are the best helmet, but up to late game, you'll be running around with these flak and simple ones. When you get to late game, I'd say switch to marine, and then eventually you'll be able to go full on cataphract. Now that we are done with helmets, we're gonna go look at some other coverage. First, we have some pants, then we have some shirts and so on. So we have normal pants over here. Do not ignore high quality pants, just normal pants made out of really good materials. Do not ignore their importance because you will always wear some kind of pants and the flag pants that come next cannot be worn with any of the power armors that we get to later on, which are really great. So mid to late game, when you start switching to more power armor stuff, you will just want to ignore flag pants and go with normal pants, especially if you can make them out of some really good materials and make them good quality. Do not ignore the importance of pants. We'll put these bad boys into B tier. Now, flag pants are definitely a great option before you get to any power armors. So I would still say make them. Make them before you get some higher armor stuff. Now, they will cost some more than just normal pants because they also cost a steel and you'll need to use a component for them. They will slow you down but it's only 0.12, I believe, uh, cells per second. So it's really not that much of slowing you down, but uh, you know, they're pretty decent. Unfortunately, they do not have longevity. You will not use these in late game at all. Really don't need to. So these will be C tier. Mid game, they can be very useful and decent to make, but later on, just normal pants will win out. Once again, the same as with normal pants, do not ignore good quality t-shirts. I went with button down t-shirt over here because I believe it protects your neck a bit more. And of course we do want to protect our necks because who would want to get shot in the neck, right? So do not ignore good quality shirts made out of good materials because you will always be able to wear them underneath any armor you have and it will give you the additional protection, you know? You might be running around in like cataphract armor, but then you have like an awful shirt made out of cloth. That doesn't really help you much. I mean, sure, even if you go to like Devil Strand shirts, they're not that amazing when compared to like high power armor, but it do add that just a little bit extra that you might need. 
So, you know, and since Devil Strand can be pretty easy and decent to farm when you go to like mid game, shirts and pants out of Devil Strand are gonna be really great. And if you can later on get up to like lots of Thrombofar, or maybe you can get a bunch of Hyper Eve, then you're starting to win out. So we're gonna put these shirts into B tier as well. Okay, next thing, we have a flag quest. This might be a bit controversial, but I value flag quests a lot. They will slow you down as much as these pens do, 0.12 cells per second, and they cost pretty much the same as these pens do. But you cannot, again, wear these with power armors. But think about it, you can wear this with a duster. If you get a really good quality flag vest, and then you combine it with a really good quality duster that is made out of really good materials up from Devil Strand or Thrombofur or even Hyper Eve, you know, Hyper Eve being the best, you're gonna have almost as much protection combining these two as you will get from any of these high level armors. Plus, these things will offer you even more protection for your chest. So if you combine duster and the vest together, you go for crazy chest protection, but less limb protection. We'll talk about that more when we get to uh, all of these armors. But then again, your chest has your heart, has your kidneys, your lungs, all those things that are much harder to replace than, let's say, an arm or a leg. So I think these flag vests combined with great dusters will take you all the way to late game and I value them significantly, so I'm putting these vests into S tier. Now, all those middle layers are done, we're gonna go first to some more jacket type uh, items and then we go full on armor. So, let's start with this normal jacket. These are pretty much inferior to all of these three other jacket type options due to the fact that while they might be slightly cheaper to make, they don't offer you as much insulation. So when it comes to hot weather, you'll want a duster. When it comes to extremely cold weather, you'd want a parka. Jackets could be something in between, but let's be real, they're almost never worth it. It's better to just go with a duster. So jackets, while they do provide same armor protection than let's say a duster, they provide less coverage because duster also has some leg coverage as well. So jackets are just, a C tier that you really shouldn't be making. You're much better off just going with dusters. And if you have extreme winter, go with parkas for that. Now we have dusters. Dusters has been amazing since forever and are like the staple point of RimWorld. These bad boys, when you can make them like really good quality and make them out of really strong materials, starting from Devil Strand onwards, these are gonna carry you into the power armor age and will actually defeat some of the power armors. These are amazing, these are great, and of course they also provide a lot of heat coverage as well if you want them. So, most important thing is, while you know they provide your chest and all that protection, they also provide some leg protection, as I mentioned before when we were talking about the jacket. That makes them even greater. They're not very expensive to make. It, need, it requires only 80 leather. So if you have Devil Strand growing, you'll be soon making these bad boys. So these are going to S tier. Capes are comparable to them. They basically have the same coverage, but capes take longer to make. Basically, it increases your wealth more, which means there's more raiders. So those are better to just be sold if you're really making them or you, know, you make them for your uh, nobles. Otherwise, dusters, I'll put dusters into S tier. I think they're amazing. Then we have parkas. They do cost the same as the dusters. They are your cold environment equipment. This is really at the point where cold is more dangerous than bullets. That's when you should use parkas. Otherwise, just go with a duster. Just, just go with a duster. It's gonna save you a lot more. While they do cost the same, they're not nearly comparable. We're gonna just put them into C tier. Very situational item, you know, just for cold protection, but RimWorld is all about situational, so think. Now we get to flag jackets. These bad boys are slightly more expensive to make than other two flag options, but they do offer very solid protection. 
So until you can get Devil Strand farming and you have plenty of Devil Strand, these will be your item of choice for protection. They do not offer as much insulation as let's say dusters or parkas for heat and cold, but you know, they will be good protection until you get to something like Devil Strand. When you have Devil Strand, you're gonna start making dusters. So these, while they can be pretty decent, I don't think we can put them higher than a C tier because in the long run, they're just gone out of the way. Now we get to actual armor. This is strong, heavy stuff. And we start with plate armor, or as I like to call it, trap armor. Now this bad boy, while it's cheaper to make than let's say a combination of dusters and these vests, and it can at really high quality and like made out of plastic, it can provide a lot of protection. It slows you down by 0.8. That's a lot. Everything is going to be able to catch up to you. And you're really way better off making some stuff like duster and vest combination and being protected by that. I think even though you can make it out of plastic and have decent protection then that plastic is way better used for any other thing than making these plate armors so unless you're playing straight up medieval i would pass these on i would ignore them unless you want to make some like wooden armors early on if you're uh, maybe medieval ish or something like that but really there's no point these i shall say are trap armor and we're gonna put them into f tier okay now we have power armor these are you know state-of-the-art stuff but there are some drawbacks that we're going to talk about over here first we have the recon armor or let's say a raccoon armor just the way we like to say it also i should mention all of these can be made in prestige version i'm not going to be ranking prestige over here just say if it's prestige it just a ranking above where we're going to put it over here otherwise there's really no point ranking it here so recon armor, as I said, is the per first uh, armor that you can make, first power armor that you can make. It's pretty damn expensive. It's gonna start costing you advanced components. It's actually three advanced components, which can be a lot. It's also plastic and uranium. Those two things being a bit easier to get than advanced components, but still can be pretty nasty cost. Now, there's a thing. If you're wearing a good quality duster made of good materials and a vest, you will actually have more protection for your torso layer, you know, protecting your organs, than if you have the same quality recon armor. Recon armor having more protection for your limbs here. So it's up to you to decide what do you want to protect more, your limbs or your torso. In my opinion here, I would rather have my torso protection and then save the plastic and advanced components that I would be using in recon armor for higher tiers of armor. I would rather do that and just go with really good dusters if I have them, you know? If you have Devil Strand, especially if you have Thrombofur or Hyper Reef, those are winning even higher. So recon armor, while it is great, I think same as with the helmet, it might be worth saving that plasteel and advanced components for further tiers. Now that being said, there's one bonus that this one has. It has no movement penalty. So if you're wearing a flak vest and maybe even a flak pants, that's gonna start stacking some movement penalty. It's not too much, but it's something. Recon armor, no movement penalty. So that's definitely a bonus. Now we get to marine armor. This bad boy requires even more research, but you don't need tech blueprints for it yet. It's, you know, like this marine helmet. It does cost extra advanced components, some more plasteel over the recon armor, but it does offer a lot more protection. Now, as I was saying before, hyperweave and thrombofur dusters combined with vests could still offer more protection for your chest but on limbs this bad boy is really starting to win over now if you actually know that you can save up a bit and you have the tag blueprints and you can go for cataphract then maybe wait for that but you probably really are not getting to cataphract armor 
any at any point later down the line now keep in mind this one is gonna slow you down by 0.4 CS. So now you have more slow edge than if you wear a vest and some of these flag pants. I still think these are great. And at this point, I would start moving from dusters to marine armor, maybe especially for those people who are more in combat and maybe keep the good dusters or still on people who, let's say, do more growing and such and have to run around a lot more. These are still a tier and I think they're great. And now we get to cataphract armor. This is really your late game armor. It is extremely expensive to make. You're gonna need to dish out six advanced components for it. But if you got to this point, you got the tag blueprints for it to be able to even unlock it, then you probably can afford that. It offers more protection than any other armor in the game. And it's straight up really great. Now it has a drawback that it's point 8 CS, it's gonna slow you down but a lot, so you know, you're gonna be a moving tank, but you're gonna be a tank. Stuff's really not gonna be able to stop you nearly as much. So this one really starts winning over the duster combination. You really shouldn't be thinking about it anymore if you really are going for combat focus pawns. That's when this bad boy wins out. The slow thing you know, you got all the way to this point. You have the tech blueprints and everything. I'm pretty sure you can make some bionic legs. And if you have uh, mods, if you're using mods, you can go even higher advanced stuff that will make you speed up and just ignore that thing. And you know, that point, this armor is just amazing. So I think this is straight up S tier up here. Now we have the three kind of improved versions of these recon armors and the marine armors and cataphract armors. First, we have the locust armor, which is the more expensive version of recon armor. It offers less protection, but it has a jump pack for which you also need a tech blueprint. So you can jump five times before you need to refuel it. You can just jump around. Now, this is more expensive and it offers less protection. If you really want to be jumping around, maybe just make a normal jump pack and use that. But otherwise, I really wouldn't be spending too much money on it. It's very situational. Like maybe you have it in one person that needs to just jump to a certain spot, maybe trigger something special that for your defenses and that can be the use for it, but it's extremely situational. I don't think it's that worth it. So we're gonna put this bad boy into B tier over here. And I think the normal raccoon armor still kind of just wins if you really want to make these. Next, we have the grenadier armor. This is, again, slightly more expensive version of marine armor. It offers slightly less protection, but it has two grenade shots. Then you have to reload them with steel. I think each one is 25 steel. At this point, when you uh, you're have a chance to make these, you have the tech to make these, you probably can afford the reload thing, right? You probably won't be able to reload in combat, but you know, you get two extra grenade shots in combat. It can do some serious damage against maybe clumped up mechs or clumped up raiders that are coming towards you. So this can be very, very useful. Now, of course, it slows you down by 0.4, again, as same as marine armor, and you know, it doesn't offer that much protection. So again, it's situational, but it can be very useful on certain pawns. You don't need to put this on everybody. You know, if you're going for marine armor, just maybe stack up a bunch of marine on most people and then have a couple of extra grenadiers. Still think these are great, even for the slightly extra cost. I think these are A tier above the marine armor and I think they are great. Last, but certainly not the least, we have the Phoenix armor. This bad boy is the upgraded version of cataphract armor. Now, it has less protection, the cataphract, right, for all the sharp and blunt, but it has more heat protection. And most importantly, it lowers your pawn's flammability almost down to zero. So the chances are you can just walk over fire with this one and you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna be set on fire and you're gonna be fine, which is extremely useful late game where you're fighting huge stacks of mechanoids. They're all coming in at you with their flame launchers and you know, they shoot at your pawns and because your pawns are on fire, it breaks them out of their cover and they get out and then get shot, which can be really annoying. But with this bad boy, you're fine. You know, you're fine, which makes this armor really, really amazing 
uh, especially against mechs and such. Now, it also has a flame launcher that can be used against human targets you know it's pretty nice aoe they can do some decent damage and again you know you can set people on fire and drive them out of cover if you need to do that but i think that one is like really the least important thing over here especially since it has one shot and then you need to reload it with some cam fuel i think really the flammability thing is what makes this amazing it's going to be really extremely expensive to make and also you're going to need some tech blueprints to even get to the cataphract research but once you get there i think these ones are amazing i'm going to put them up here into s tier and that concludes a ranking please let me know if i forgot something or if i misinterpreted something or if you feel like i have screwed up somewhere and you feel like something else is s tier something else is f tier let me know how you feel about this and if you haven't seen my weapon rankings up here you can click on them or uh you know there's gonna be links in the description thank you for watching and i'll see you